Hi, I'm Baron Stone and I'm an engineer with Waterloo Labs. I designed the PCB layout for the iControl Mario project. PCB stands for Printed Circuit Board and that's what this thing right here is. We developed a human to Nintendo interface using a custom daughter card on top of the SB Rio platform. This is the single board Rio. It integrates a real-time processor with a Xilinx FPGA, which is Field Programmable Gate Array. The FPGA is a kind of logic chip that can be reprogrammed to perform custom processing in hardware rather than software. The FPGA has several digital I.O. lines which are routed out to these connectors on the SB Rio board. This is the custom daughter card we designed. It has digital I.O. connectors on the back and it fits on top of the single board Rio like this. It's kind of like a sandwich. We can create a custom daughter card for any application we want to. In this case, our application happens to be a human to Nintendo interface. We use the digital I.O. lines on the daughter card to communicate with the FPGA and real-time processor on the single board Rio platform below. For the iControl Mario project, we had an analog interface which read sensors from the player and a digital interface which communicated with the Nintendo. It was important that the power supplies for these two interfaces didn't connect or the player would get shocked in the face and that hurts a lot. When I was designing the board, I was careful to keep the analog and digital sections of the board separated from each other. We used magnetically coupled analog to digital converters to branch between the two sections. I began the process by creating a schematic in NI's multi-SIM software. The schematic is a symbolic representation for all of the components in the circuit and how they are interconnected. Once the schematic was complete, I transferred that information over to another piece of software called UltiBoard to lay out the physical components on the board. I started with the reference design for a single board Rio daughter card and then positioned the parts where I wanted them and drew routes for all the wires to connect those parts. UltiBoard also has this cool 3D view, which was useful to make sure I didn't accidentally place a component on the wrong side of the board. After I finished laying out all the components for the circuit board, I sent the design to an online PCB manufacturer, and a few days later, I received the blank boards in the mail. It only cost $33 for each one of these custom boards. We just soldered on all of our components, and through some engineering miracle, it worked the first time. And that is how daughter cards are made. For more information about this project, and detailed schematics and layout files, click on the links below.